Good morning. Before I start, just a, a quick reminder about, otherwise Bev will tell me off, about Pop-Up Church in Queen's Park at three o'clock. All age on the theme of autumn treasures. It'll be totally interactive, apparently, at a safe distance. But just to remind you that, probably it's not throwing it down with rain, and the weather forecast is good, uh, Three o'clock in Queen's Park, and we'll have a pop-up church. Who else was kept awake by the rain last night? Did you not hear it? Oh dear. It was terrible. Wave after wave of rain was coming in. And along with the recent seemingly endless rains, and with all around us pictures of uh, rainbows referring to support for the NHS, and even the name of our local Nightingale Hospital means rainbow. And the isolation. This gave me the theme for today's service. Who else was so isolated and in lockdown? Existing in a localised bubble. Or in his case, an ark. The Noah and his family. 
and he was given the rainbow as a sign by God that he would never destroy humanity again. Well, if you look at the small print, it's by flood. So I thought it was very appropriate, so I wore the jumper. But I want to start this morning with a, a prayer from a little leaflet that's actually available on the, uh, the internet. If you look on the Planned in No Methodist, you'll find a link to it. Uh, it's called Coffee Shop Sunday, Prayers in Lockdown. And it's 19 prayers written about lockdown and to say during lockdown. And this one is called Lockdown. And it's written by Marilyn Slow, Jonathan Coles, Ruth Thomason, Janine Patterson and Eileen Clark and Sue Fry. Let us pray. Loving God, who comes to us and watches us, watches over us, even in lockdown, we pray that you breathe new life into us. Faithful one, as we are thankful for past mercies and blessings, so we trust you for what the future holds. When we went into lockdown, we were afraid, even though we knew your spirit is with us. We have lost some faithful servants, but we have been given the opportunity to meet others to join together in prayerful fellowship. Loving God, we went into lockdown in obedience. May we show the same obedience when we hear your call. Enable us to trust in you, to lead and to direct us. Lockdown was different with no church buildings or groups. A new normal became online. Not cancelled, but stronger together. Lockdown enabled us to change. Gave us more time at home, made positives out of negative. To read your word, pray, make new friends and get through it by God's love, grace and protection. Loving God, you have used lockdown to remind us that the church is the people. Buildings have been closed and yet your word has continued to be preached and the praises of your people have never ceased. Loving God, we thank you for the many blessings we have received through your lockdown, throughout lockdown, especially for the greater time we have to draw closer to you. We give thanks too for Coffee Shop Sunday prayers and unexpected fellowship, which has become so important in our lives and a wonderful gift to your church and the world. Amen. And now, it mentioned in that prayer, Faithful One, so our first song to listen to is a song, is a song faithful. Call out to you again. 
again and again. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in times of trouble. You are my rock. circulated on Facebook. It was a depiction of Noah's Ark being tossed by the waves in a storm with the statement, first quarantined family. If you know the biblical account of Noah's Ark, then you will know that Noah and his family, eight people total, were chosen by God to be saved from his judgment on the earth. This judgment came in the form of a flood and Noah and his family were quarantined inside the ark. Now, in a 30 minute service, I couldn't read the whole of uh, Noah, because it's verses six, seven, eight, and nine of uh, Genesis. And it takes about 25 minutes to read it, if you do it properly. Uh, so I've got a little story uh, video, which does it in three minutes, which we'll have a look at, just to remind us of the story of Noah's ark. Stories of the Bible, Noah and the Flood. This is Noah. Hey! Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah! But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Colors, bird, moth, okay, all here. Noah did just that and then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. The rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water! Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth, but Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat. God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent a dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. So the dove returned to the boat. Oh, hello again. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it came back with an olive leaf. Oh, that girl. So Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again, and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat 
and saw that the ground was drying. He waited two more months, and at last, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay. So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. See ya. Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Why do they always get the number of animals wrong? <laughs> it wasn't two by two, it was two pairs, or seven pairs. But uh, it's not that bit that I want to look at. Did you notice how in that one, Noah waited another two months after, you, after the flood had gone? It was all about waiting. It was all about, oh, we'd better give it a little bit more time. And we're getting like that now, aren't we? In isolation, in our regional lockdowns. And with them, most of us can begin to relate to what Noah must have felt like quarantined inside of the ark. Just as we are sheltering in place to preserve human life, God quarantined Noah and his family, along with several of every kind of living creature, inside the ark to save their lives. There are many parallels that can be created from the biblical account of Noah to our present time in quarantine or in lockdown. Noah tried to save the lives of himself and others through his actions and lifestyle. And that's what we're trying to do. Noah and his family's lives were so threatened and the way to safety was to go into the ark and into self-isolation. And for many of us, that's the case. Noah and his family placed their trust in the Lord despite their circumstances. Now that's a lesson for us all. Noah and his family experienced a separation that comes from death and they experienced grief for all those others that wouldn't obey God and were left and drowned. Noah and his family worked during their lockdown, caring for the animals, the ark and each other, knowing they would eventually leave the ark. And Noah and his family praised the Lord for his goodness and his love when the waters receded. And they were able to leave that ark and resume the new normal. The parables are certainly interesting to think about. A good parallel, remember the effect on Noah's mental well-being after coming out of the ark? What did he do? He grew a vineyard and ended up drunk and embarrassed. And that is a great parallel to our post-lockdown rush to the pub isn't it? We need, when we're tossed around in our isolation, an anchor. And being a member of, uh, or having been a member of the Boys Brigade, it always comes back to this hymn. Will your anchor hold?
you got an anchor, anchored firm and deep in the Saviour's love. We really need one at this time, don't we? I was, as I say, drawn to the story of Noah. <laughs> Go away. Technology for you, isn't it? She does insist on talking. Um, I came across a, an article by a, a Jewish psychologist and writer living in Melbourne, in, in Australia, uh, called Shrolik Barber. And it's called COVID-19, Noah's Ark and the Art of Communication. Again, I'll leave a, a link to it on the, uh, on the website. But it put into words exactly what I wanted to say. So I thought, I'll read it, as opposed to doing my own words. And this is what he says. As the world gradually descends into lockdown, I'm reminded more and more of Noah's Ark. Not simply from the parallel of time spent in shelter from a global crisis, but for the opportunity to deepen our relationships and to nurture the fabric of our families. In recent days, many psychologists and health experts have voiced concerns about the impact of extended self-isolation on marriage and family life. As we spend an increasing amount of time with each other without external distractions or outlet, personal space may shrink. Annoying habits may become more visible. Anxiety about our safety and financial stress can cause us to become irritable or to withdraw. And panic can make us irrational. Not only is there genuine concern for a spike in domestic and family violence, but COVID-19 may prove to be the ultimate stress test for even the most stable and happy relationship. The story of Noah's Ark shares the same challenges we face today. Humanity facing an existential threat, instructions to shelter in place, and the mental health challenge of extreme isolation. According to the Medrash, uh, just to add, to add that's a, a group of Jewish commentaries on the he, he, uh, Hebrew scriptures compiled between AD 200 and 1200 and based on exegesis, parable and Hagaic legend. I, I, looking at that description, I, I tend to think of them of similar to how St. Paul and the letters in the New Testament describe the Old Testament. But according to the Medrash, however, Noah's story came with one more hurdle. God instructed that the time in the ark be spent in social distance. Each couple were to spend the entire year without physical touch. Imagine watching the world collapse outside your window. The darkness of night only fading into the bleakness of day without the comfort of embracing a loved one. Many people can. But without physical touch, something else happened in the ark. Each couple were compelled to find a way to share support, give comfort and express love in a different way. When Noah was bitten by an enraged lion, his wife's empathy, not her embrace, comforted him. When his wife grew despondent, Noah's companionship, not his embrace, eased the loneliness. As couples and as a family, they learned to love and care for each other with a different language, expressing comfort and affection with their hearts and their words, instead of holding each other's hand. They held each other's feelings, needs, and concerns. When the storm abated and Noah, his wife, his sons and daughters-in-law finally exited the ark, the Torah used a new word for the first time, family. 
Because while in the depths of their isolation, amid the dread and grief of witnessing the devastation of the world they once knew, they discovered the secret to a healthy relationship and a loving home. And so there are parallel lessons for our time. As the weeks roll on and the world remains sheltered in place, as the fear and anxiety bleed from news headlines into our hearts, our relationships face a crisis and a challenge they may not have confronted before. We will all cope with stress and crisis differently, and we all have different opinions of how we and others should respond to this pandemic. We might become unbearably optimistic, or we might become uncomfortably fantastic. We might turn to faith, or we might feel betrayed. Yet to nourish and strengthen our relationship and family through this time, we will need to speak the language first heard in Noah's Ark, a language of empathy and communication. Be prepared that your partner or sibling, child or parent may not agree with you. That doesn't mean that they're wrong. Instead, try to really listen to what is being said. Because beneath their words, there is likely a raw and fragile emotion reaching out for love and comfort. When I read those words, I... They went to my heart, and I hope I've done them justice, and they've gone to yours. We're going to come to a time of, prayer, of uh, responsive prayer now, and I'm using a set of intercessions from the Church of England, prayers for use during the coronavirus outbreak, also available online. I also give you a list of it on the, on the website. Let us pray. There is a response, which is on the, should be on the screen. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold, for the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread. <coughs> as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is another one with a theme of being on life's tempestuous sea. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Oh, oh. 
Go in peace, in the power of the Spirit, with your faith anchored in the steadfast love of God. Look for the rainbow. May the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with each, with, with each other of us, now and forevermore. Amen.